All right. Hello, everyone. We are getting going here soon. We're going to start at 6 p.m. All right. What's up, John? How are you? You're on mute. I'm good. How are you? Hey everyone, we are going to get this started at 6 p.m. Central Time. This is our first time home buyers webinar that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to talk about what we can offer to help you with the process. We're going to talk about what it takes to qualify. So stay tuned. We'll be going, going live here shortly.
Hey everyone, this is Caleb. We're going to get started in about, we're going to give a few minutes for folks to get in. I would say four to five minutes, we'll get the ball rolling here. Just want to let folks get in. Um, we got participants coming in as I speak. So we're going to admit them all. We're going to get started here in about four minutes. All right, welcome, welcome. We're gonna get started in a couple minutes here. We're just gonna let folks get in here. I wanna thank you for joining us. Those who have showed up so far, you're on time. Congrats. Looking forward to talking through with you and answering your questions. All right, all right. I'm going to give a couple more minutes here just to let folks get in here. I see we we also are streaming this live as well as here on Zoom. So we've got folks in the Zoom, we got folks on the live. Hang tight. We're going to get the party started in just a couple minutes here. I want to let folks get in. We are going to do our presentation. We will ask the folks to drop questions in the chat. All right. Give us another minute. We'll get we'll get started here. Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and get started? I just wanted to thanks, thank you for joining us. My name is Caleb Jennings with the CAMS Jennings Group at Guaranteed Rate. My partner, John CAMS, is here. He'll be talking shortly here. Just wanted to let you know that uh, we are here to help you with all of your mortgage needs, whether you're looking to buy a home, if you're a first time home buyer, which most folks here, this is a first time home buyer seminar, um, but or if you're looking to buy an investment property. We have some awesome products and really unique products too for first time home buyers. So we're looking forward to helping you. If you're someone who wants to uh, start the process right away, 
um, please send us a message and we can send you an email to get the ball rolling. Uh, we don't want to, we don't want to wait. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go on mute just so that John and I aren't talking over each other. And I'm going to hand it over to John. Hand it over to John. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. Hey everybody. Thank um, you so much for attending. Um, I'm getting an echo. Getting an echo. But uh, anyway, so yeah, thank you so much. Um, a uh, little bit about me. I've been doing loans for about 20 years now. I got in the business in 03, seen it come, watched it go, um, seen it uh, definitely a challenging market right now, but um, we're here nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead, Caleb. And uh, so about guaranteed rate, um, guaranteed rate, we are one of the na nation's top three retail lenders. We have a 97% customer satisfaction and we're the top retail, top three retail mortgage in lender in the whole country. Uh, I'm sure you've seen where we are the Sox Stadium. We have the naming rights to that. Uh, and what is our promise to you? Well, our promise to you is low, low rates and the ultimate in technology service and advice uh, our, our founder, CEO, Victor Tridelli, designed Guaranteed Rates Revolutionary Market Disrupting Model to do just that. So uh, give you low rates on the right mortgage product along with transparent and fair fees, uh, leverage cutting edge technology to streamline the mortgage process and simplify every step, and provide unmatched service and expert advice to help, our, help clients find uh, the perfect mortgage. Uh, what Guaranteed Rate was pretty much the first the, the first mortgage company to really get a digital application. Um, and our technology is just second to none. Uh, we've really streamlined the process. Uh, with our digital mortgage in 20 minutes, you can upload and digitally sign all your loan documents, get, a, uh, get an approval from an automated underwriting engine, and begin shopping with a pre-approval letter in hand. And uh, it, basically, what does this translate to? A home process, a home purchase process that is easier and just faster than ever. Um, so why work with us? Well, first, we're fast and we're transparent about the mortgage process. We have in-house underwriting. And, and so what that means is we, the, we underwrite the file in-house. We fund the file in-house. We control the whole process uh, from start to finish. We actually sell directly to... Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So we just get it done is the best way to put it. Uh, case in point, we are our underwriting turn times 24, 48 hours. We can close a loan literally 10 days. Um, so uh, we also have a full product offering with uh, all the top lending institutions. We do FHA loans. We, FHA, we underwrite FHA loans in-house. Um, we do condos. We um, have in-house condo approvals. We're, we're in Chicago. There's a lot of condos. Condos can be try, be a little tricky. So we do those in-house. We have a full renovation loan department. Uh, we do VA and USDA loans, and we're also experts in the jumbo financing uh, arena. Um, we really believe in uh, loans that fit. Everybody's a little different. So we'll tailor, uh, cust custom tailor a program and a structure that fits your needs. Uh, going a little bit about just educational, um, there's basically two types of mortgages. You can get a fixed rate mortgage. It's fast, it's safe, secure, predictable. Um, fixed rates available for any term between 15 to 30 years. You can actually do a 10 year too. Um, but uh, you, you, the, the advantages to a fixed rate is that you know that you're going to have the same payment every month. Um, you know that uh, from a long-term perspective, um, you don't have to worry about the principal and interest ever going up. Uh, so it's impervious to market volatility. So if you're going to be an investor, uh, oftentimes 30-year, 15-year fix is the way to go. Um, and the, the ideal life situation, somebody who's going to want this is going to be people who want to put down roots or don't plan on moving in the next five to 10 years. Um, families seeking a good community and school for their kids and renters who want to build equity instead of giving away money. Uh, so um, the, the other type of mortgage that you can get is an adjustable rate mortgage. Uh, these are going to be six month and one year adjustments with a fixed rate option of five to seven or 10 years. So if you do a five year arm, it's fixed for five years. If you do a seven year arm, it's fixed for seven years. It's 10 year arm fixed for 10 years. Um, traditionally, you're going to get a lower initial payment uh, on, our, on an arm. Um, and but you're gonna you you're gonna be exposed to risk when it adjusts. If rates are higher in five to seven years, like they happen to do in the last two years, well, 
and you had a, a five-year arm and that, that five-year initial um, fixed period is over, you're going to be subject to a higher interest rate. But you do get a lower monthly payment during the fixed period. Um, and an annual lifetime rate adjustment cap is from one to 6%, which is uh, important. Um, so we also offer other loan options. We offer jumbo loans, conforming loans, renovation loans, FHA, VA, USDA. Um, we're going to kind of go into more depth on what these are, but ultimately we have more options here. We have more control, which uh, really translates to a smooth and efficient process and experience uh, for you. So what are the five steps to a perfect loan? Well, we're going to let Caleb go ahead and uh, get into that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and hand this off to Caleb now. Thanks, John. Yeah, so just a... Before I get into the five steps to the perfect loan process, I, just, I know that often we get from our clients, especially first time home buyers, questions about, okay, guys, what do you look at to get me pre approved? What do I got to do to get pre approved? And really, there's four things that we look at in the pre approval process just to get started. So, the first step ever when you're going to get pre approved is you're going to start our online application. Um, and like John talked about, it's really intuitive and easy to do. It takes about 20 minutes. And what it's going to do, it's going to gather all the pertinent information that we need in order to really uh, determine how much you qualify for. So what do we look at? One, we're going to look at credit. So when you apply, what's awesome here at Guaranteed Rate is that we can actually just do a soft pull. Most lenders are going to require a hard pull but we can first just do a soft pull to see if it even makes sense for you to move forward or not. And it's not going to give you a hit on your credit for doing that. So first, we're going to pull your credit with a soft pull. And what we're going to look at is your credit score. And with us, we look at all three credit bureaus. And we don't go off the highest score. We don't go off the lowest score. We, we go off your middle score. And typically speaking, like the lowest score you can get to qualify is a 580. However, a 580 can be very challenging and it's 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 difficult because typically you're going to need other compensating factors like you know a lot of money and assets things like that to help offset that so really you're going to want to have 600 620 and better is going to be much easier to go than having a 580 um so one is your credit score that's typically pass or fail then then second when we pull your credit we're going to get the report of all your minimum monthly debt obligations. What are those? Your car payment, your student loans, uh, credit cards, et cetera. What we look at is, okay, what are your minimum monthly debt obligations? And we add those up and that's your total monthly debt. So we've got your credit score now. We've got your total monthly debt. The next thing we're going to look at is your income and what we call qualifying income. So it, when we look at that, we determine, okay, are you W-2 employed or are you, are you self-employed? Those are two different ways to look at it. And what we need when you're W-2 employed, we're going to look at your last two years of W-2s. We're going to look at your last two years of federal tax returns. And we're going to look at your last 60 days of pay stubs. Uh, when you're self-employed, we're going to look at your last two years of federal tax returns, and we are going to go off of your taxable income, not what, what you say you made like to us and versus what you reported to Uncle Sam. We have to go off of what you reported to Uncle Sam as ta taxable income. Once we have your qualifying income calculated, then we can look at your total monthly debts, and then we can, we, we can look at that, and that's how much you got coming in each month, how much you got going out each month. That's your debt to income ratio, and then we look at what would be an all-in monthly mortgage payment on top of that? And that's how we determine your debt to income ratio, what you got coming in each month, what your total monthly debts are, including a monthly mortgage payment. And typically speaking for a conventional mortgage, you can't exceed a 45% debt to income ratio. With FHA, government loans, you can go up a little bit higher than that. Um, but that's really where we can figure out how much, how much purchase power you have but the fourth piece is really important as well as your assets. And really what your assets are is where is the money going to come from for your down payment and your closing costs? So once we have all those four pieces together, which we get from your application, 
we're able to do a consultation with you and really talk numbers um, and let you know, are you here? Here's where you're at today. Do you qualify today? Or here's where you're at today. And these are the things that you need to do to be able to qualify tomorrow. And we really like to help folks get on a plan to do that. So just wanted to hit that before I go into the five steps to the perfect a perfect loan, which will cover a little bit of that. But really, you know, the five steps is that you apply. First step is you apply with our digital mortgage to get pre-approved. And I just hit on those things. These are some of the documents that we're going to be needing. You know, you, you'll get to look at our intuitive loan finder, kind of determine some things, but really essentially you're going to apply. We're going to, it's going to prompt you to upload your pay stubs, assets, tax returns, also, we're going to need to do a verification of employment, so it's going to ask for a contact at your of your employer. But it, this is just the way to get the ball rolling. Then the second step is that well, the backup, I guess you know, once we determine that, we issue you a pre-approval. And when you're pre-approved, you'll work with your realtor, and we have great realtors that we work with that we can refer you if you need one. That you will then go out shopping for your new home. And essentially, when you have the pre-approval, that tells your realtor, okay, this is the max amount that they can really go shopping for. And it's really kind of like your ticket to go into homes and see it. Without it, they don't like to show you homes because they don't know if you qualify or not. So when you have it, that's your ticket to get into the home, to check it out. You can go shopping for a home. And you want to have a great realtor because in order to, you know, you want an expert who knows the market. Who know who knows homes well, so they'll be able to see problems before that you you before they are a problem for you. Um, and as far as that goes, is that essentially you're just going to want to go shopping with them, and through that process, you're going to probably see a lot of homes. You're going to fall in love with some, and you're going to want that one, and it's going to go under contract before you make an offer. And it's a really tough market sometimes, so you're going to have to like you know. You're going to fall in love and get your heart broken a few times. I know speaking from my own experience, I know that when I went shopping for my first home, I definitely thought I found the one and and then I didn't win on the offer. And then I ended up the home that I ended up getting, though, was the one I actually really wanted. And it all worked out in the end. Um, but the first step is that you get pre-approved, you go out shopping, you make an offer. And once the offer is accepted... Now you are under your under contract and you're going to sign that contract. And basically during this period, you have an executed contract. We're going to need to update documents, make sure everything is up to date. Um, you're going to cut a check of earnest money and earnest money is basically a deposit that you're giving, uh, telling the seller that you are serious, a serious buyer. That money goes into an escrow account. It can be anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 that, that you're going to cut a check for, goes into escrow, and that money gets set aside and is just put on hold. And in Illinois, you know, when you're, there's an attorney review process, so during this time, you're going to also then order a home inspection. Um, let me back up here. You'll, the way it'll work is you go under contract, you have your earnest money deposit, you have a right to have a home inspector, which we encourage you to do, and your realtor will encourage you to do as well. And what that is, is that when you get a home inspector, it's basically buying some insurance. It's someone that you hire that's a professional that's going to go in and inspect the property from top to bottom. They're going to make sure all the mechanicals are right. They're going to make sure that the plumbing, the electric, the roof, the thing, structure, all those things that matter, they're going to make sure are good to go. And if not, you're going to, regardless, you'll get a report back and it, it's going to tell you what needs to be repaired, what may need to be replaced. And that's an opportunity for you with your agent to possibly go back to the seller and negotiate and say, hey, I would like you to repair this. I would like you to, re or I would like you to replace that. Or I would like you to give me seller credit, some money that I can now use towards my closing costs and I can deal with that issue later. Um, but it's it's a it's a key point in negotiation in the process. Also, once that process is cleared, you are now outside of attorney review. You will tell us, say, I'm ready to go. I'm moving forward. And then we as a lender order an appraisal on the property. And the appraisal is going to look at what is the value. It's a, it's a professional appraiser is going to look at 
what is the value of this property and how do they do that? They go in, they do an inspection of the property as well, but they also look at what has sold that is comparable to the home you're buying. And they're going to give you a report back again, telling you the property is either at value or it's above value or it's below value. If it's at value and above value, you're smooth sailing, moving, moving forward. If it's below value, it's another point in negotiation with the seller. Someone has to make up the difference. It's going to either be you or the seller. So typically right now in this market, it's, you can get the seller to reduce their purchase price um, in, in order to meet that need. So now once you've done that, you're going to, you're going to be in the underwriting process with us. You, your loan is going to be in underwriting. You're going to get a conditional approval. What that means is that the underwriter is going to say, I approve this loan. We are going to give them the money. However, there's a few things that need to be cleared out before we do that. And so you will work that uh, work through those conditions. Our team helps you with that as well. Um, and basically, once those conditions are cleared, you will then get a clear to close. So what that means is that you will get a clear to close saying that we as a lender are going to fund your loan. And then you get a you get a closing disclosure, which will show you all the final numbers. And then basically, you're going to schedule your closing with your attorney or with your realtor, where you're going to sign all the paper paperwork, and you're going to then receive your keys to your home. So I'm going to quickly, I'm going to whoop, stop sharing that. I'm stopping sharing, John, and I wanted to open it up for questions or if you, John, if you have anything to add to that as well, but let me first also see, we wanted to open it up for questions right now. So if you have questions, please drop them in the chat, or if you want to go unmute and just raise it, that's great too. You can feel free to unmute and ask us a question as well. Are there any questions right now? Yeah, anybody, what are, what are your guys' plans? I don't know if anybody wants to oh, unmute, but um, anybody want to share what they're trying to do? Or um, are you guys first-time buyers? Are you looking to buy an investment property? Anything? You don't have to talk either. <laughs> <laughs> to talk either. <laughs> it's all good. So, I mean, essentially though, uh, here we go. We're first time bar starting the process and looking to learn more. Awesome. Yeah, Kate, we would love to help you. I mean, the other thing that we can do off of this is schedule a time to talk one on one. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to have this consultation here. Um, so, what we like to do, depending on your timeline, if you're saying, "Hey, we actually want to buy in the next, you know, six months," I would recommend you that you start our digital application because that's going to really help us inform the consultation. However, if it's a little bit down the road, you know, we're more than willing to set up a time to talk to you as well, to kind of go through things, look at your individual situation. Um, yeah, but I appreciate that, Kate. Any other questions here or comments? Let's see. Oh, John actually, hey, Jonathan. You're coming back for more, huh? Yeah, I remember you, John. How you doing? I saw you. Uh, I saw you come into the uh, thing. Thank you so much. Um, what did you say? Help me. 2013, man. Uh, time flies, huh? That seems like it was just yesterday. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll totally help you, John. Um, I'll I'll reach out to you after this. Um, as we discussed, it's probably going to be best just to to do the digital application, but um, we'll be happy to help you. It's not not much has really changed since you, uh, uh, at least not the, the 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 fundamentals of the process, John. So um, you'll 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 feel like a pro. This isn't your first time at the rodeo. So um, the other thing I was going to say too, Kate, is that uh, we have a really amazing. Um, it's called the Ultimate First Time Home Buyer Guide. We can get that to you. It's one out there, but I urge you and uh, whoever else you're looking about. You went on mute, John. Oh, I did. Can you hear me now? 
Okay, I don't know when it went on mute. Um, but anyway, Kate, I was saying that uh, what would be great, if you want, we have a really good ultimate home buying uh, guide that uh, is interactive. We can email it to you. It's it's phenomenal. I've, I've been doing this 20 years. Like I said, it's the best one I've ever seen. Um, so that'll really help you uh, for to learn a little bit more. Uh, we can forward that to you. And then it looks like... Uh, let me answer this question. So yeah. Jamika had a question. How does the FHA finance uh, first-time owner-occupied properties? So FHA is uh, backed by the United States government, and it helps folks typically who maybe don't have uh, the uh, not the like the best credit. Like it's like if you're in this if you're in the low six hundreds, typically you're going to have to go FHA because FHA is more forgiving on credit and We'll let you do that. And with FHA, the, the down payment is 3.5%. What's cool about FHA is that it's 3.5% down for a, a single family home. However, it's also 3.5% down up for a two unit, a three unit, and a four unit. So often our clients, even if they could qualify for conventional, may choose to go FHA when they buy a multi-unit. So, because when you buy a multi-unit conventionally, you have to put more down. So they could put three and a half down and buy a four unit. Um, and we often, ha we have some clients who have kind of a vision that they want to eventually become investors, like buy a real estate investment. And they, what they're doing or what they've done, I have some that are doing it now, some that have done it in the past, they're going to buy their first purchase they're, as a first time home buyer, they're going to buy a three or four unit building uh, where they could put 3.5% down, but the requirement is you have to own or occupy it. So they're going to move into that building and they're going to live there for a few years. And then what their plan is, is that they're going to then buy a single family home in a few years where they're going to put 5% down on a single family home and move into that and owner occupy it, but they're going to keep that three to four unit and have renters in it. And it's a way to start kind of building some investment as well. Um, so it's a, they call it kind of house hacking, a way to use your FHA to buy a building first and then, then go after a year or so into a conventional mortgage, buying a single family home. Um, hope that answers your question. Your Let me question. see if there's a, yeah, I have a, a, um, a yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that I'm not sure if it's true, but they were saying, I, I have heard that the if you buy a like a unit the first time like for like your first time home buyer then the other properties like if you buy an apartment building you can use that rent you can use that a portion of that rent or something like that yeah so what it is is this um when you buy a multi-unit building so if you buy a two unit three unit or four unit you can you you have to live in one of the units but the remaining units you can use as rental income. And what, so let me just break it down kind of in a simple way. So let's say you bought a three unit and let's just say all things are equal that when the market rent for those three units is a thousand dollars each, okay? You're gonna live in one unit, but the other two units are gonna now bring in $2,000 a month for you. Now we can't go off of, uh, the full $2,000 to be used towards your qualifying income, we have to use 75% of that. So for unit two, we can use $750 and unit three, we can use $750. So, so basically that was at $1,500 that can be added on your qualifying income. So we can say, okay, this is what you make on your, your W-2 day job, your gross monthly income. We can now add that rental income on top of that to help qualify you to buy that property. So it is a really cool way to do that. Um, now there may be some, we may need you to, so we may need uh, you to take a class or a sometimes they want you to take a class if you're a first time land. If you're a first time land. Right. But uh, otherwise, um, but, uh, it's definitely otherwise, a smart uh, way to do it. Definitely a smart way to do it. Okay, one more question. <laughs> If once you do that, how you said that you have to stay there for about three years, then you go buy, you could use the FHA loan on, on like a first time home. Then when you put the 5% down, does that rental income still, that's still included with like your day job, your W-2 income? And then you can use the income for all three units? Correct. Or is it yes. still just the two? 
Yes. Yes. So let me let me explain that. I'm gonna so me, put you on mute because you're at. So, so yeah, Jamika. So the way it would work is this. Okay, you buy a three unit. So your first step, I'm gonna owner occupy FHA a three unit. We can use the two units in that three unit to help qualify you to buy that three unit. Okay, and then now you're going to decide that and. After a couple of years, you're going to go ahead and buy your own single family home. We can now, now if you, you're going to be renting out all three of those units and you're going to buy your own home, we can use the rental income from all three units. Now, the only catch on that is, is that now that you're in those units, it's going to be really determined also on how you're reporting that rental income on your tax returns. Because sometimes folks are saying, yeah, I've got these all rented out but they got a really good account tax accountant who's writing everything off and making it like they're not making any money or any rental income. Maybe, maybe that makes it look like they're taking a loss on the building. So the key thing is this, is that if you're going to want to use rental income to help you buy your next single family home, you got to make sure that when you, when you do your taxes, that your accountant is aware of that saying, okay, you know, I need to be able to make sure I have rental income to show as taxable income, because if you don't do that, then we can't use that, if that makes sense. Any other questions? Yeah, appreciate you, Jamika, for asking the questions. Those are good questions. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go on mute, John. Uh, so one thing I just want to elaborate on, um, once you, you, once you use your FHA loan, you, the next home has to be conventional. Usually it's, it's extremely hard to get two FHA loans just to clarify that. So that's why the strategy would be use the FHA loan and get a, a, a multi-unit. I've got a borrower right now who kind of did it the opposite where they went and got an FHA single family home. And he's done really pretty well on it and has some equity. Now he wants to buy a multi-unit. So we're having to refinance him out of the FHA loan on his current property to put it into a conventional loan. So he can now utilize his FHA loan to go buy a multi-unit. So just one, interest, one intricacy to be aware of is all I wanted to point out. Thanks, John. Any other questions? Yeah, so I think that. Yeah, we'll get you. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we'll, I see you, Sydney. We'll get you guys, everybody. We'll get everybody here a copy of that guide. Um, yeah, I wonder if we can just drop in the message. That would be great. Yeah, if you guys also go to Cam's Jennings Group dot com, it's K A M as in Mary, B as in boy, S as in Sam. Jennings, J-E-N-N-I-N-G-S group.com. Then, uh, and you scroll to the bottom and you'll see, it'll say uh, free home uh, buying, uh, ultimate home buying guide. You click on it, what's great. They don't make you fill anything out, click download. You don't have to give any data or anything, um, but that's one way to get it. I just dropped it in the chat right now. So if you want to, um, right here, that link I just dropped y'all in the chat, you click on that, that'll take you right to the home buyer guide as well so yeah one other one other thing i wanted to bring up well is uh, as well if you guys are ever just are you see a property that piqued your interest and you want to know like hey what would this look like what would be my down payment what would be the payment just shoot us a, our, our team line is uh 402-882-5626 uh that number again 402-882-5626 so you guys can send us a text anytime and say, hey, 123 Main Street, can you let me know what this would look like? And we can get you numbers that'll, it's really nice. So break down everything, payment accurately. When you go on these sites like Zillow, Redfin, the numbers are never accurate. They always way overestimate the insurance. They way overestimate the PMI. So there may be a property that you think like, oh, this payment's too high, but you just don't have the right information. So utilize us for that. We're here to help you guys. If you see a property you love, but you want to know like, hey, can I even do this? We can, in, in a matter of minutes, be like, hey, here's the payment. Here's all in what you need down. Um, let us know what you want to do. So you don't hesitate to reach out and utilize us for that. 
Yeah. And if anyone, you know, is ready to go, wants to start the process now, you, let us know. We'll, we'll get you going. Um, we'll circle back to everybody here. But, you know, like I said, if you're planning on buying in the next zero to six months, now's a great time to get your ducks in a row. And we really like it. it, it we often see folks that kind of put off the pre-approval process, it, like until it's they want the house now and then now they're going to do the pre-approval process. And then unfortunately we find a little bump in the road and they, they can't get the pre-approval as quick as they needed to buy that home. And so we really like to get in front of it, you know, start now because then we can iron out any of those bumps and, and really help you and say, Hey, here's an issue. We as a lender know if you do X, Y, Z, you're going to be good to go and get ahead of it now so that when you're ready to pull that trigger, you're, you're going to be in the best position as a buyer and have the most power as a buyer you can. So that's what we really like to do. Any other questions before? I'm going to, I wanted to elaborate one more thing. Also, um, the, the market right now is, like I said, it's, um, it's the, about the, the, the best buyer's market we've had since uh, COVID. And uh, what we saw just in, so interest rates peaked in, in November, they were like, call it, seven and a quarter to seven and a half today they're six and a half uh and go up about a half a point from literally just a couple of weeks ago um but when when we saw rates go from call it seven and a quarter all the way down to six um there was a huge influx of buyers into the market just from going from seven and a half to six uh, and I don't know if you guys saw, but um, the inflation numbers came back a little hotter than than they like. So the market is 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 back to where rates went up again by another half a point to call it six and a half percent. So uh, I think what you really see here is a is a buying opportunity where what's going to happen is that um, if you look at all the all the market indicators, inflation is coming down stubbornly, but it is coming down. And odds are we're most likely going to be in a recession. Uh, or it's going to be acknowledged that we are in a recession. So um, I think that what you see is what we're seeing here is that it's a very, I think there's a very short lived buying opportunity where if you wait until let's say December or the, the summer and rates are down back in that 6% or, or even five and a half percent range, you're going to see the, the problem that you're going to run into is that number one, um, there's there's even there's even less you're going to see all these people that were hibernating come back into the market and what they're going to do is they're going to come back into a market with even less inventory so i would really urge you guys to look at it here and now um because again if you if we get into the rates like we saw and and just even two weeks ago we were seeing a huge uptick um so i would urge you to look sooner rather than later and now uh, we'd be happy to help you awesome any other questions? Otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Really appreciate folks for joining us. Uh, I dropped our phone number is in the chat. We got the home buyer guide is in the chat. So download it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and call us. That's our team line. That 402 number rings John and it rings me and it rings our other loan officers too. We are at your service and we want to help you. So uh, really appreciate you. And looks like we're going to wrap this up. We good, John? Yeah. Good? All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, any questions, again, just hit us up. We're here for you. Have a great night.